Hello and welcome to this video for C108 Mechanics of Deformable Solids. So this is the last video for chapter 2 um, and in, in this video we are going to talk about the ultimate stress of a given material and the, uh, the factor of safety. So in the previous video what we did is to define the stress and how to define how to calculate it. So we can calculate the normal stress and the shear stress that is acting within a given body if we calculate the load and divide it by the area. So now we are, what we are going to talk about is like when we know the stress, how do we know is this material is going to break or not? So as a reminder, to define if a given member is going to break or not, the first thing that matters is the load. If there is no load then the material is not going to break. If the load increases then there is a higher chance that this member is going to break. The second thing that matters is the geometry and especially the surface of the load or the surface of the area over which the load is applied. The, the area of the cross section over which the load is applied uh, also matters. If you have a very thin material it's more likely to break than a very thick material if the surface is larger then the load is transmitted over a larger surface and so those two things the load and the area over which the the, the load is transmitted this is what is captured by the stress okay the stress is the load per unit of surface so it's capturing the effect of the load and capturing the effect of the geometry of the member and then the last thing that matters and that defines whether a given material is going to break or not is the material itself. So if the member is made of concrete or plastic of steel, then you, you, it's going to break under different stress. So the, the last thing that matters is what is the, the material? Uh, is it uh, steel? Is it concrete? So what is the member made of? And certain materials are more resistant to fracture than others. And what will dictate uh, whether a material break or not is whether it's going to depend on the ultimate stress, the maximum stress that a given material can sustain, either under tensile compression uh, or tension, uh, or under actual compression, under uh, actual tension, or under shear. So the quantity that matters to define whether uh, how much stress a material can sustain before breaking is the ultimate stress. So the ultimate stress is going to be the maximum stress uh, that can be sustained by a given material, that can be sustained by a given material. So again, uh, if you have a material made of concrete or um, made of uh, steel, then uh, those materials will have different ultimate stress because some materials are stronger than others, so they can sustain more stress before breaking than others. So when it comes first to the normal stress, so material can break either due to a normal stress or they can also break due to a shear stress. When it comes to the normal stress, there is really two types of normal stress that have a different physical meaning. There is the tension and there is the compression. The tension by definition or by convention, uh, this is what we defined as a positive shear stress. And then there is the, the compression, which by convention is what we defined as a negative normal stress. And in this case, a tension or a compression, it's not simply a difference of sign. It has a different physical meaning. It's different to put a material under tension to elongate it and to put a material under compression to, uh, to compress it, to shrink it. And in many cases, in most cases, it's much easier to break materials under tension than to break them under compression. So now, if we think about a given material, a given material will be characterized by some ultimate stress, which are the maximum stress that the material can sustain before it breaks. So in the case of the, the, the normal stress, there will be two ultimate stress. So if you start, if you take 
a given material like this and then you applied a normal stress sigma so you start at sigma equals zero so initially there is no normal stress at all so the material is not going to break then so you will start for example applying um, a positive shear stress so as you start to increase uh, sigma initially the material will not going to break it will just elongate until you reach a critical threshold at which the material is going to break and in this case we are talking in this case um, of positive stress so that's going to be a tension so once the material once the stress that the material um, is experiencing exceeds a threshold and this threshold will be the ultimate stress under tension then the material will break on the other hand now if you apply a negative uh, normal stress so now you apply a compression now you will start to apply more and more compression sorry compression is negative normal stress so you apply a compression so the, the stress becomes more and more negative again at some point the material is going to break once the stress becomes so negative that it exceeds a maximum uh, ultimate stress which this time will be an ultimate stress under compression so there is in this case two types of ultimate stress for the normal stress one under tension one under compression and again typically the it's easier to break a material under tension than under compression so in absolute values the ultimate stress under tension will be smaller than the ultimate stress under compression you need to apply more stress under compression to break a given material than you need to apply stress under tension so now if you think about this they are, so we we can define two quantities to characterize if a metal is going to break or not under a normal load so we're going to define for each material concrete wood uh, steel etc it's going to be, each material is going to character to be characterized by an ultimate stress under tension and an ultimate stress under compression so in the case of the tension so we are going to define the ultimate stress under uh, tension and in this case the the condition will be that as long as the stress remains lower than the ultimate stress under tension then there is no fracture but if the stress becomes larger than the ultimate stress under tension then there will be a fracture so that's going to be the condition of fracture the condition of fracture is if the the stress the normal stress exceeds the 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 ultimate normal stress under tension same thing for the compression so now we're talking about the the compression if the stress becomes more and more negative so if the stress uh is is uh becomes negative but doesn't become negative enough to exceed the ultimate stress under compression so if the stress despite becoming negative remains still larger than the ultimate stress under compression then there will be no fracture and on the other hand if the normal stress becomes now so negative that it, that it becomes smaller than the ultimate stress under compression then that's going to be the condition of fracture so in this case again for we need to define those two things the ultimate normal stress under tension and the ultimate stress under compression and the material will break if the, the stress even becomes so positive that it exceeds the ultimate stress under tension or so negative that it, that it becomes lower than the ultimate stress under compression and same thing we have the same thing for the for the shear stress 
In this case, again, a positive or a negative shear stress really makes no difference. You can break um, in the same way a material under positive shear or under negative shear. One is a clockwise deformation, one is an uh, anti-clockwise deformation. It makes no difference. It's exactly the same, which is different from the case of normal stress, where in this case a tension is very different from a compression. So in this case, there is no difference between a positive and a negative shear stress. You can break a material due to a positive shear stress or due to a negative shear stress. So in this case, what matters is only the absolute value of the shear stress. Whether the shear stress becomes very positive or very negative, you have the same chance of breaking the material. So in this case, the condition of no fracture will be that in absolute value, the shear stress becomes lower than the ultimate shear stress. So same thing for each material. Each material will have a given ultimate shear stress in the same way that they have an ultimate normal stress under tension and an ultimate normal stress under, under tension and compression. So if the shear stress in absolute value is smaller than the ultimate shear stress then the material can sustain, then there is no fracture. And if the shear stress in absolute value becomes larger than the ultimate shear stress, then that's the condition where fracture will be observed. There is going to be fracture if in absolute value the shear stress exceeds the ultimate shear stress. So if the shear stress becomes larger than plus to ultimate, then the material is going to break. Or if the shear stress becomes so negative that it becomes smaller than minus to ultimate, then it's going to break. So if we represent it like this, in this case, the, um, if you start with a zero, zero shear stress, if it becomes, if the shear stress becomes so positive or so negative that it exceeds uh, to ultimate in absolute value, then the material is going to break. So as long as the shear stress becomes in between those two extremes, then the material is not going to break. So we need for a given materials, when you, when you build a given structure, you know what kind of stress you expect. And in this case, you will need to choose a material that can sustain those normal stress and those shear stress that the, the member is going to be able to sustain. So depending on the types of load that you expect, you will uh, pick the material that uh, as being either wood or plastic or concrete or still depending on the normal stress and the shear stress that you expect. If you expect that the structure will be subjected to very intense stress, then you will need to select a very strong material like steel, for example. But on the other hand, if the stress is, uh, is much lower, then you will uh, favor a cheaper material like maybe plastic that, that, uh, that cannot sustain um, a very large stress values, but that is going to be cheaper in return. Uh, also keep in mind that certain types of material are very strong under tension or compression, but some others are uh, strong under shear. So certain materials are strong under tension, but not so strong under shear, and vice versa. So certain types of material are very strong under shear, but not so much under tension. So de again, depending on the types of loads and whether you expect that the load will be mostly normal load or more um, uh, a shear load, then certain, of certain types of materials will be better for certain types of application. For example, concrete is typically pretty weak under tension, but strong under shear, and steel is uh, very strong under tension, but pretty weak under shear. So again, depending on the types of, of load and the type of stress that you expect, you, uh, you will have to choose the right material that will be that will have the right um, ultimate shear stress and the right ultimate normal stress uh, to avoid any risk of fracture. So in more detail, when you choose a given material uh, that can uh, sustain the stress that you expect for a given structure, or on the other on the other on the other hand, if you have a given material and you're trying to determine what is the maximum stress 
that this structure can sustain, you cannot directly use the, 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 the ultimate stress as a criterion to say whether this structure is going to be safe or not. You cannot simply say, well, I can calculate that the stress is lower than the ultimate tensile stress or the ultimate compressive stress or the ultimate shear stress so the material is not going to break. So uh, it might be true that the material is not going to break but that's not um, that's not the way you would proceed in practice in um, when you choose the material to build a given structure. So why is that the case? It's for several reasons. First, you cannot always exactly know what is going to be the exact load that is going to be applied for your structure. For example, if you build a bridge and you expect that there is going to be a given load that is going to be applied to some columns of the bridge where the load will be the weight of the bridge itself and also the weight of whatever is um, uh, on, on the bridge like cars or trucks or whatever. So uh, you can design this uh, based on the, the load that you expect will be applied on this bridge but you cannot predict exactly what is going to be the final load. The load that is going to be applied on practice to this bridge might be higher uh, than the load that you anticipated. So there might be some variability in the load that is going to be applied to a given structure. So if you just design, if you just pick a material that is that only has um, a, um, an ultimate stress that is only slightly higher than the stress that you anticipate this structure will be undergoing, then if it turns out that the load is even slightly higher than the one that you anticipated, then it, it the, the, mat the material might fail. So you, you cannot simply say stress lower than ultimate stress, so I'm good. So you need to have some kind of um, uh, factor of safety, which is what we are going to talk about. Another reason where it's not okay to simply use the ultimate stress to choose a given material and to design a given structure is that besides the variability of the load, there might also be some variability in the materials. Like for example, if you build uh, a given uh, structure out of concrete, there is some variability in the properties of concrete depending on how much water you, you mix with your cement or uh, depending on the quality of the cement that you are using to concrete most likely will never have exactly the same uh, ultimate stress. So di different concrete will have different properties depending on different factors during the manufacturing of this concrete. So there is some variability in the properties of the material. So again, the same concrete, so two concretes that uh, despite the fact that they are made in a very similar fashion, they will have slightly different ultimate stress. So again, it's it's not okay to just say, I'm assuming that this material is uh, has an ultimate stress that is slightly larger than the stress that you estimate uh, will occur within the structure because there is some uncertainty in the uh, ultimate stress of these materials because of some variability of one material to the other, because of some intrinsic variability in the performance of materials. And the second thing is that when you make a construction and when you design a structure, you always need to ha you always want to have some kind of tolerance to um, uh, take into account the aging of the structure, the fact that there's going to be some uh, potentially some unexpected events that this structure is going to be exposed to, earthquake, etc. So you always want to have some tolerance. You don't want the, the material to be slightly higher ultimate stress than the stress that you would have. You want to have some margin of safety. You want to have some tolerance to make sure that even if there is some variability in the load, some variability in the material, you have a margin of safety before the material might break. And so for this, rather th than defining the maximum stress then that you want the structure to have based on the compressed on the um, on the ultimate stress of the material that you are using what we are going to define rather is to define the uh, allowable the allowable stress and the allowable stress will be the maximum stress that you 
defined to be allowable based on the material that you are choosing. So for example, if you have a given material and this material has a given ultimate stress, so that's the stress at which the material is going to break. In practice, rather than saying that, okay, then my structure can sustain some stress that goes up to this ultimate stress, you will say that the maximum allowable stress then that this structure can sustain is not the ultimate stress of the material, but something that is smaller, a smaller fraction. Um, and this is what we are going to call the allowable stress. The allowable stress is going to be something that is smaller than the ultimate stress than the material can sustain. And the reason that you are doing this is because, again, you want to have some kind of margin of safety. So you don't want the stress applied to this structure to be exactly at the limit at which the material is going to break. You want this stress to be lower with a given uh, tolerance, with a given mar margin of safety. And so the way we define this allowable stress is by taking the ultimate stress that the material can sustain and dividing it by a factor. And this is the factor of safety. So this factor of safety is just um, a number. And this number is typically equal either uh, from one to five and sometimes up to, uh, to two. So it means that in this case, you are going to take the ultimate stress that the material can sustain, you dividing it by 1.5 or you divide it by two. And that gives you in practice the allowable stress that uh, in practice you want the, your, uh, your structure to, to be. You, you want your stress to never exceed this allowable stress. And that way, even for some reason, if there is some viability in the material or some viability in the load, if it turns out that the load turns out that it's going to slightly exceed the allowable stress, you still have this margin of safety due to this safety factor that even if it exceeds the allowable stress, it's not going to exceed the ultimate stress. You will have this margin of safety due to this factor of safety ranging from 1.5 to 2. And so in, um, in practice, that's what you do when you design a structure, you use this margin of safety. So if you want to be uh, if it's a very critical structure, then it's good to use uh, a safety factor of two. Uh, if you, uh, if it's a, a structure that is less critical, then a, a margin of safety of uh, of one point five would be uh, would be acceptable. So in this case, what you want the condition in this case is that the the load, the service load, the load that you expect will be applied in practice to your structure, should be lower than the allowable stress. That's going to be the, the condition that you want to impose in this case. Rather than, con rather than comparing the, the service load that will be, the service stress that will be applied to your structure to the directly to the ultimate stress, you want to combine it, you want to compare it to the allowable stress. So in this case, that's going to be the, the condition that you will want to enforce is either you have a given material and then based on that, you will calculate what is the maximum allowable stress that this material can sustain, or you have a, a given structure, you calculate how much stress is applied to this structure, and then you will choose accordingly a given material such that the materials, because it has an ultimate stress that is high enough, will have an allowable stress that is larger than the service stress that you expect inside the, the structure that you are considering. So in this case, I'm defining the factor of safety for the normal stress, but you would have exactly the same thing for the, for the shear stress. So in this case, the same thing for the shear stress, you would define a factor of safety so that uh, rather than comparing the shear stress that is applied in the, st in the structure to directly the ultimate shear stress that the material can sustain, you will define an allowable shear stress where the allowable shear stress would be the ultimate shear stress div divided by this factor of safety. And you would want to make sure that the service 
uh, she has stressed that the material will will sustain in uh, the condition of the series of the structure will be lower than the allowable she has stressed that you allow based on the material that you are considering so this is what we are going to see for now for the for the stress uh, in the next chapter what we are going to see is the other aspects of what happened to a material when it's subjected to some load uh, the, uh, in this chapter again we talked about stress and this tells us if this material is going to break or not in the next chapter we are going to see the other thing that can happen to material is how much are they going to be elongated due to to the, the load, the external load that are applied. And this is what is going to be quantified by the strain. So in the next chapter, we are going to be talking about the strain and define the strain and then see how strain is related to stress. We mean that if you know the stress, you can calculate the strain. And if you know the strain, you can calculate the stress. So which is what we are going to see in the next chapter.